Dear friends, it indeed is a great honor for me to be in front of you. This is the first time I am uh, coming to Kanpur and uh, IIT Kanpur. Hopefully, it's not the last. Uh, tonight, I am going to talk about the evolution of you and then uh, also different kinds of youth and in the end uh, I will uh, conclude with a, uh, a few points about what I think should happen as far as classical music in India is concerned. So to begin with, uh, few existed according to some of the excavations around 35,000 years ago some excavations have revealed that flutes were made of uh, bones. Uh, I'm just going to show you a, a few slides of various uh, flutes that have been excavated. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, some of the flutes that were found around 300 BC had so much of precision in their tuning that uh, in the present day generation, in spite of having so much of technology, we are facing a lot of problems to have the calibrated flutes. So just, uh, I'll just rush with the slides so that you have an idea of how the flutes evolved. These are flutes that, were, that are uh, made out of bones. You, you can read the name, it, it's from the bone of a vulture. So the uh, the bone that was part of the wing of a vulture was used to come up with this uh, instrument. Then uh, as the civilization progressed, uh, we, we, we realized that uh, our ancestors are also trying with different elements. So they tried flutes with uh, metals. Uh, some fragments of silver flutes were found. This is a ceramic flute. And the one that I'm wearing is not a locket, this is also a flute. I'm going to demonstrate it later. So it's something similar to this. Then there were multiple flutes. Uh, in, in Indian tradition, you will find multiple flutes, two flutes in uh, several parts of Rajasthan. It's called Algoja. This is modern English flute or the Western flute. You didn't like my lecture. <laughs> I better finish before you all fall down. <laughs> so, that's the modern English flute with lots of keys. And uh, this is a double contrabass flute. Uh, just like in the family of violins, you have violin, viola, cello, double bass, and contrabass. So, the size goes on increasing. So, the, the flute that you are seeing here now uh, is almost 8 feet. And this is uh, Oh, another variation of this flute is what I play and I am the first Indian as she mentioned, the contrabass flute. Uh, I have to stand and play, it's almost 8 feet and uh, it takes a lot of breath obviously. Uh, so if you if you are interested then you can visit flutopedia.com for all these pictures, it's very interesting. Now after the evolution of all these uh, flutes, Lord Krishna, by the time it came into his hand, the flute more or less looked like this. It had one blowing hole, it was closed from one end, and then it had six playing holes. This is from many of the uh, pictures and uh, writings that we can make out that he played a flute of this size. And But we, we definitely don't know what kind of music he played. Although we hear stories that whenever he played, the animals, the humans, everybody got enchanted and they were mesmerized by his flute playing. So uh, that apart 
From then onwards, I think flute in India has become symbolic of uh, spirituality, or um, it, it, it has formed, formed an integral part of all the music that is prevalent today. In the folk traditions, we see that the flute generally is used um, of this size or smaller because uh, they don't have, they didn't have mics earlier and they wanted their instruments to be heard uh, at a greater distance. So smaller the length, higher the pitch. So the flutes then became um, you know, integral part of, uh, of folk music. And then when classical music um, started, when the vocalists started to perform, flute became an accompanying instrument. So most of the scriptures and sculptures that you see on temples, you see a flutist behind a vocalist. Coming to the modern era, this instrument uh, of, uh, of this size uh, has stayed on in Carnatic music. They generally don't use flutes uh, longer than this. Uh, the reasons may be different, but nowadays uh, many of the modern flutists use the longer flutes as well. Uh, this is generally the length of the flute that is used for Hindustani music. Um, the reason being, Hindustani music is more melody oriented and uh, they, they expect more of, um, um, well, I should say, uh, the sustained notes have to have a, a more deep impact on the listener. So a deeper sound is preferred. So the difference between these two flutes is that they are of the same pitch but octave, uh, the difference in octave. I'll just show a demo of how both the flutes sound. This is more frivolous, so that is probably the reason why Krishna held it in his hand. <laughs> it's my opinion. Um, then, um, let me show you some of the flutes that I have brought, and I have this uh, uh, habit of collecting different kinds of flutes, variations of flutes. So, uh, as I said, this is one instrument that I picked up from Spain. So that's an instrument. And uh, they have their own specific purpose. All these instruments have got their own limitations, but at, uh, yet they have their own identity. Uh, this is one instrument that uh, I, I I tried building it myself uh, because I remember that during my childhood, uh, my grandmother she used to prepare flutes for me just 
you know, for fun. And uh, this clay flute was also one of her uh, gifts to me. And this is one flute. Now I use this in my fusion concerts. So if I, if I have to produce uh, effects of birds, and if I have to depict um, the beauty of nature, so uh, the coil or birds, uh, bees humming, something like that. Different kinds of flutes. And this is one interesting flute. Uh, this I picked up from a tribal uh, uh, guy in uh, Manipur. Uh, this doesn't have any holes. It's got a lot of uh, embroidery, but uh, if, if uh, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it, uh, the way to play this is very, very unique. you can produce different melodies. And uh, I have seen few people uh, do what we call as jugal pandis, you know. One person rotates it at a different speed and then the other guy answers it and all that happens. With, uh, so what I wanted to say is flute has become an integral part of all civilizations. Even now, it's kind of, uh, it, it has got a special place. And the, the reason probably is that uh, flute, uh, uh, it doesn't have strings. No strings attached, literally. And then, <laughs> there's no leather, no keys, nothing. You know, it's just, just bamboo, and, and uh, the player himself becomes one with the instrument, and that's when the music becomes uh, sublime or so uh, breathtaking. And um, some modern uh, flute makers have used uh, glass. It's very difficult to tune in the glass, but they managed to create a flute. Uh, it's more of a showpiece than a performance tool. Uh, but I just wanted to show it to you. Then uh, we have some Western uh, instruments like this. Uh, key flute, which is made of silver. And then we have a recorder. Uh, these are all uh, flutes that have been made uh, scientifically. A lot of uh, work to calibrate and you know find the right uh, place to put the holes. But the beauty of our instrument, our flute, is that uh, we managed to get all the notes with just the six blowing holes. And um, uh, in the year 1980, my father, who who was my guru, he did an invention, a research, and then he came up with this thumb hole. And I can proudly say that our family is the first, my father was the first, and I'm the only practicing Hindustani flutist who uses a thumb hole for uh, classical ragas. And uh, this has become a boon because I can, I can imitate any vocalist uh, with the help of the soul. And this is a trade secret because I close it with my thumb and no one realizes what I'm doing. Most of the flute, flute players are flabbergasted. I hope there are not many here, so that's why we will do it. Well, since the clock is running and uh, I don't want to take much of your time, uh, I'll just make a small uh, uh, mention about what I think should happen in uh, classical music. See, what happens is that in the journey of, uh, of a classical musician, he goes to a guru. Uh, and then he starts training under him. In the traditional way, it will take at least three decades to get into what does real classical music. And uh, when he comes out in his mid 40s or whatever, he sees that uh, classical music doesn't have much takers. I mean, there's no sponsorship, there's not money there. Um, I, I'm mentioning this particularly. Um, to you all, uh, because you are going to be the future uh, CEOs, CFOs of all the corporate companies. So it's kind of uh, your responsibility to see to it that classical music gets its due respect. Bollywood is entertainment. It cannot become our tradition. To sing the song tonight, today, 
in Bollywood, you don't have to be an exceptional singer. I, 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 I'm sure all of you agree. As an engineer, I know it myself because anybody can sing and then you can tune it on the computer and it can sound extremely good. But for a classical musician, just putting on the Tanpura and singing the Saregama Padanisa, none of these present day Bollywood singers can do that, barring a few exceptions. So, what I'm trying to say is this food for thought. Do we actually need to, uh, you know, uh, give so much of uh, importance to Bollywood music that uh, our traditional musicians, our classical musicians are being sidelined? I don't know. Uh, some of the classical musicians like me, who uh, have, uh, you know, jumped on to fusion um, and uh, collaborative music, we survive. Uh, but for the purest, uh, purest in the sense that who, who can who can do collaborations, who can do Jagal Bandis, but they are they more, much more happier doing the pure classical stuff. For them it is, it, the time is a, a little different now. It should change. And I see that there's a lot of change happening. And I really hope that uh, in the future, uh, it's going to be brightened up further. I leave you with a small video wherein I have played different flutes. Uh, I've used my contrabass flute and the other flutes. It's a small video. I hope you all enjoy, enjoy it. And uh, thanks again, once again, IIT Kanpur. And uh, thanks to all my panelists uh, for including me along with them. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time.